Um, this is Marcel Lederstein from CXO Solutions. Thanks for joining this uh, MDX training. In this training, I'm going to uh, explain the basics of uh, MDX. Create a PowerPoint site, and I'm first, I will first discuss the agenda of, uh, of today. I will explain to you the basics of the MDX queries. Every time that when you open up a report, uh, CXO is using MDX to query the data from your source system. I will explain to you what CXO is actually doing in the background. Um, when I'm explaining the basics of uh, the MDX queries, I will also uh, explain the basic concepts that we use in an MDX query. So, for instance, uh, a set or a tuple. All that information is background information, uh, which is quite useful when you are going to create cube calculations in the cockpit and also when you're going to create MDX lists. Um, I will explain to you the basics of our um, MDX cube calculations and I will also explain to you the basics of our MDX lists. Um, it is not only theory and listening uh, during this, uh, this training. Um, I will also give you examples and um, I will have some questions for you which you can um, then vote on. So uh, let's see if you will understand the basics by, uh, by looking at those uh, answers uh, you give to us. First of all, at the very beginning, what is actually MDX? Well, MDX, the abbreviation stands for multidimensional expression. Um, it is a query language for OLAP databases. It is uh, invented by, uh, by Microsoft. Um, the good thing about MDX is that you can also use it as a calculation language. So you can, can actually compare it uh, to the calculations that you also create in spreadsheets such as uh, Excel. Um, what is good for us is that MDX is embraced by a wide variety of OLAP vendors. So, um, uh, if you look at the sources to which we connect, so SAP, um, uh, Oracle, Tegetic, they all uh, accept or they embraced MDX as a language. So, for all the different sources, we use MDX to query the data. So, how does an, uh, an basic MDX query look like? Um, it first starts with a set on the columns. And the set is just a group of numbers. So actually what you do when you open up uh, or when you create a report, every time you need to specify uh, what is on the columns of your report. Next to that, you also need to specify what is on the rows of your report. Um, the next step in the basic MDX query is that you specify from which cube you want to retrieve the data. So that is the third one you see. The last part, the where, that is the part where you indicate uh, what numbers sh should be used uh, of the dimensions that are not specified on either the columns or the rows. If you look at the basic concepts um, that we use, uh, first of all, uh, you use members in an MDX uh, query. Well, that is quite obvious. It's just a member from one of the dimensions, from one of the hierarchies of your source system. Um, in this example, you see dimension dot hierarchy dot member. Uh, for some source systems, uh, it is required to uh, specify the hierarchy. For other si source systems, such as S-based, that is not necessary. So in that case, you only specify uh, the dimension name. So then you would see dimension name dot and then the member name. Um, if you look at the second point, that is where we give an example of a set. A set is nothing more than a group of members from one specific dimension. So in this case, uh, we just made a set out of two different accounts. Accounts for sales, the sales account and the cost of goods sold account. If you look at the next point, that is an example of a tuple. A tuple is a group of members from different dimensions. So in this case, we have a combination of a period, January, and we have a, a member of a category dimension, actual. So in that combination of two members from two different dimensions is called a tuple. 
we can combine uh, tuples and sets, then we are talking about a tuple set, which is a group of tuples uh, with the same dimensional setup. So here you see January actual and February forecast. You can imagine that you uh, specify uh, those different numbers for two different columns. So your first column will then be January actuals and your second column will then be February forecast. If we look at a more uh, or at an example, so a bit less theoretical, you see here now our MDX query, uh, but now with the members. So as you can see, uh, also in this example, we just used that January actual combination and February forecast combination on the columns. So in this report, we would have two columns. On the rows, you see that we are using uh, the accounts, so the sales account and the cost of goods sold account. Uh, the cube, the name of the cube we currently query is just cube, so a very simple name. And in the where we just put uh, the dimensions that are not specified in the rows or on the columns. So uh, over here we just used year 2016 and entity HQ. This all gives you all the maps that we use in this example, so all the, uh, all the different dimensions are specified, and this will return a number from the source. If we now look at cube calculations that you can create inside CXO, um, then the first uh, bullet point is important, because the cube calculation that you create in CXO is always a new member. So instead of using an original member from your source, you can create a member as a cube calculation inside CXO code. The cube calculations that you create in CXO cockpit can be applied to columns, to rows, and also in the where. So actually you can use your cube calculation everywhere. If you use your cube calculation in the where statement, then your cube calculation is applicable to the complete report. Later on, I will give you an example how that works. A cube calculation would al must always return a result, and a result can be the following. It can be a number, so the first point, um, if you create a cube calculation, you can just enter a number like 100, and then when you use that cube calculation in your report, you will just see that number, 100. What you can also do is you can create, of course, a calculation with your cube calculation, and that calculation, for instance, the cost divided by sales, will return also a number. Next to a calculation, you can also use an MDX function. Now, an example of an MDX function is uh, the average function, which is uh, shown over here. So in this case, the average is uh, calculated of product 1 and product 2. MDX functions are uh, defined uh, by Microsoft. They have a library available in which you can look up all the different functions that can be used with MDX. And I will provide you that URL to that library later on. Um, next to uh, a number, that is the result of your cube calculation, um, a member of the same dimension can also be used inside the cube calculation. So let's say that you create a cube calculation for year to date, and in that cube calculation you just specify that you want to have a look, or that you want to use the year to date input member from your source. Another option is that you can use a function again of MDX, and in this case we have the example that it will take the member 2016 of the year dimension, and that it goes one step back with the pref member function. So then it will actually retrieve 2015. Um, the last option that we have is that it can return a tuple. Uh, a tuple is a combination of uh, members of different dimensions. So let's say that you create a cube calculation in CXO for the final budget. And in that cube calculation, you then state that you want to retrieve the member budget from the category dimension and that you want to retrieve 
uh, the member final from your version dimension. In that case, when you just use that final budget category member, it will always retrieve the final budget. Some general rules regarding uh, cube calculations in the cockpit. First of all, a cube calculation must have a unique name. If you give a uh, cube calculation a name that already exists in the system, uh, you will get an, uh, an error message. So you cannot even save the cube calculation. Next to that is that the cube calculation uh, should always be linked to a dimension. You're actually creating a new member inside Seekso Cockpit and that member should just be part of one of the dimensions um, that are available in your source system. So you can compare it with just an original member that is also part of a certain dimension. A cube calculation or a calculated member can use explicit members from other dimensions. So um, I already gave the example in the previous slide. It's not like that you always uh, that you can only specify members from the same dimension to which you link your cube calculation. Um, you can also just refer to other dimensions, um, to all the dimensions actually of your source. You can use static variables uh, in your cube calculations. You maintain variables inside the cockpit and all those variables such as the current period and the current year, they can be used inside cube calculations. Next to that, um, we can also use dynamic variables and the one that we use, what that we can use is the added curve. So that is actually the added curve variable is actually the one that is always looking at your point of view to see what member of, for instance, the added curve of the entity member, so the entity dimension is used in the point of view. An other dynamic variable, uh, such as the added curve minus one, cannot be used. So if you want to go one step back, um, when you look at the member selected in the point of view, that is not possible uh, in your cube calculation. At least you cannot use the added curve minus one. You should use something else, such as the pref member function um, that, is, uh, that is just a, an, an available MDX function. The last important point is that the order of your calculations uh, inside CXO is important. In CXO you just have a large list, a big overview of all your cube calculations. And you can give your cube calculation an order number. Let's say that in one of your cube calculations or that you're creating a cube calculation and that you refer to another cube calculation. The cube calculation you refer to should have a lower number than the cube calculation you're creating. Because only then CXO is actually aware of that cube calculation and can use and can refer to that other cube calculation. So again, the cube calculation you you've refer to should have a lower number than the cube calculation you're creating. Cube calculations are very powerful and this uh, mainly also because we can use if statements in, uh, in the cube calculations. So you can just check a certain situation whether it is true and then you can give it a result and in other cases you can give it another result. The if statements in uh, the cube calculations uh, work with the case when statement. So you always need to use case when. So in this box over here, it's just a very basic setup of, an, uh, of a conditional statement, of an if statement. And we always start with case when. Then you have your logical expression, so the thing you are going to check, for instance, and what the year is, so case when the year is 2016 and it is always followed with this then. You always write then and then you give it a result. You can for instance say 100 or you can use a calculation over here which gives you a number. After the then you have the else, so in all other cases, so let's say that's not 2016, then you will have another result. And your conditional statement always ends with 
extent. So the conditional statement always looks as follows. You start with case when, you then have a then, you can have an else, and you should always end with an end. On the right side, same type of example, only a bit larger the example because we start with a case when, so we have the first expression We've, that is always followed with the result. However, now we also check something else. So you can think of that you first check for the year 2016, then you check for the year 2015, and then it is followed with an else for all other cases, so for all other years. Again, also here, you end with an end. Um, one other important um, topic when you are using MDX is that there are two different ways to query the current context. The first one, for example over here, you see dimension, hierarchy, and you can write dot current member. In your case with SBase, you do not have to specify hierarchy, so you're just writing dimension dot current member. And this one checks the current cell context. That means that if you use this statement, it will, for instance, look in your table, in your column, what uh, members in your columns are being used or in your rows. So let's say that you're looking for a specific period member in your report. It is looking at the period members used in your columns. The other option that we have is that we use the added curve. And the added curve, which is a variable, dynamic variable, is always checking the point of view. So in this example with periods, you can have uh, columns with period members in it, but it might also be possible that you have the period dimension in your point of view. For instance, with a rolling report, which you just select a certain period and then the columns roll back. In case you use the added curve, your MDX query, your cube calculation, is checking what member is selected in the point of view. An example of an added curve member, a variable, an added curve variable, is displayed over here at the bottom. So it's always added curve and then in between brackets uh, the abbreviation of the dimension. So in this case it is looking for the entity member selected in the point of view. Compared to normal members, for which you always have to specify the dimension in front of it, with a uh, variable that is not necessary. So you see those strange symbols at the beginning, at the end, that always works like that. So you do not need to specify the dimension in between square brackets in front of it. When you start using MDX in CXO, my advice is always to use our selector at the top you have a drop down in which you can select the dimension from which you want to use a member and then next to it you can select the member you want to use. If you then press on this add button, the member is uh, automatically added in the correct way uh, to your MDX query. So you cannot make any mistakes by doing it that way. Now some more practical uh, examples. Uh, in this first example, I created a cube calculation and um, we're using the current member uh, function. So if we just read it, it's quite easy to read. I'm just checking whether the year, the current member is 2015. So if the current member inside my report is 2015 and if so, it is just subtracting Asia, the entity Asia, from geographical, which is in this case the total. Then we have the else, which just states geographical. Oh, I will go back. Which just states geographical. So that means that if the year is not 2015, it will give the amount of geographical as a result. And then we close our statement with end. So also over here you see we start with case when. It is followed by a then, we then have an else, and we close the statement with end. Um, if we look at this uh, query at the bottom, it's a bit more advanced. 
because we make a combination of the current member and a variable. And in this case, we check whether the current member of our report, so for instance, of the, 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 the in this case it's a period uh, member, but for instance in the columns, if that one is equal to the variable per current, so it's equal to the current period that is maintained under maintained variables. If so, and in case the account member, the current member is cost of goods sold, then the result is null, and null means empty. For SBase, uh, we use missing, it's a bit different. In one of the next slides, I give you an overview of uh, what we use with uh, SBase, and for the customers using both HFM and SBase, I just compare the differences between those two different source systems. So I think it's quite a convenient overview to have because it's almost the same, but sometimes it works a bit uh, differently. In all other cases, so in case uh, the current member of the period dimension is not the current period and is not cost of goods sold, then we just use the measure member none. In this case, the data is loaded on that none member, so this will just give you uh, the data from your source. This slide just gives you an overview of functions that are mostly used for cube calculations. Um, first of all, we have member functions. So as you can see, uh, we already use the current member in our examples, but we also have pref member. We can use children, which obviously provides you uh, with the children of the member that you use in your statement. Um, you can also use or retrieve the properties from the source by using the dot properties option. Next to that, we can use numeric functions. I also already gave an example with the AVG, so with the average function. Um, but you can also use a max function that returns to you um, the member with the highest number. Um, and the last five functions that we have are logical functions, and they either return true or false. So you can check whether a member is empty, or you can check whether a member is a base member by using the isLeave function. You can imagine that uh, you use is empty in your case when statement, so that in case something is empty, you can create an exception inside your cube calculation. Or in case a member is a leaf, so a base member, that you can perform uh, or that you want to perform a calculation with those members. And if not, you do not want to calculate it. So here is an overview of the differences uh, between, uh, in this case, HFM, BPC, Tegetic, they're all the same, they're using the same type of MDX language, and S-Base. Um, on the right side, I think that seems to be, well, that should be familiar to you. Uh, we use the IS to check, uh, in the case when statement, uh, for a certain member. So as you can see, entity dot current member is member entity Asia, so the Asia member from the entity dimension. As you can see on the left side with HFM, that's a bit different. Uh, we often use then current member dot name with the equal sign, and then we just specify the member name in between uh, quotes, so without the dimension name in front of it. Uh, with SBase you also have another option. So that is the option you see over here, and the OR. This is working the exact same way as this example here at the top. So it's just up to you how you want to check for a certain member. Bose is checking for the member Asia. Um, in case you want to check for a number, whether a certain entity is giving you a number one, then you should use the equal sign, the is sign, and you should not write it as is. Um, 
difference between HFM and SPACE is also that for HFM we use null to get an empty result and for SPACE we use missing to get an empty result. For SBase, it is important to change the order of your cube calculation by giving your cube calculation an order number. Um, it's just a field which you can just enter a number in. With uh, HFM, that's working a bit differently. Um, what we sometimes do with SBase, not in all applications, but in most of uh, the SBase applications we do it, uh, we create a split. Um, so in this example, uh, we are talking about a split of the pure dimension of SBase, and we split that dimension into two different dimensions for CXO. So the period dimension and also the view dimension. Um, we often do it because then you will have two different selectors uh, in the point of view. So for the user, it is um, more easy to select a period member and a view member instead of having a very big period uh, drop down in which they can see both, uh, for instance, the January member for uh, periodic and also for year to date. So it's a bit more convenient for users that they have then two different uh, dimensions and two different drop downs in the point of view. Um, in your cube calculation, you can still specify the members of uh, period and view. You can both use the original member, that is just that, inside your source system. Um, but you can also use variables to uh, indicate what number you want to retrieve. So an example um, is the added curve variable that you want to use for a split dimension. The added curve variable is just then consisting of two different parts, the added curve for the period part and the added curve for the view part. In this case, it would just get you the current number for period and view and CXO maps it and will retrieve uh, the correct member from your source system. If you're not bothered with uh, one of those members in your report, so let's say uh, you just want to search for February and it can either be uh, on year to date or periodic, that doesn't matter, matter. you just want to search for that peri uh, uh, period member February, then you can also get that member or specify that member by using a variable so in this case, we created a variable first. We attached the value to it. So we created the add per fab. We selected the month February. And then uh, by using that variable inside our cube calculation, um, we can just check for that February member regardless of the view member. So the last... Uh, bullet point is actually an important one. So in case you want to specify one member of the split dimensions, you do need to create variables inside CXO. So this one has been created. We attached the February month to it, and then you can specify one member of your split dimension. Um, Microsoft created uh, the MDX query language and they also created a very nice function library in which they state all the different functions that you can use with MDX and they also provide you with examples how to use them. Um, so if you do not have this link yet, bookmark it because if you start working with uh, cube calculations uh, it is very handy. It contains a lot of information and you have a good overview then of everything that is possible. Uh, I also like uh, the next URL is uh, from the site MD Expert. That one gives you good examples. So the examples of uh, Microsoft are sometimes a bit difficult to understand. And I do like the examples that MD Expert uh, is using. So uh, I would advise you to also bookmark that link 
because it's quite useful. In case you start working with uh, cube calculations, uh, you will notice that your cube calculation will sometimes give you an error. We have the check button for that in our, uh, calcu in our uh, calculation editor, uh, but sometimes it's still quite difficult to see uh, where the um, error is coming from. In that case, you can go to our CXO configurator, and in there you can see uh, what the complete query, MDX query, um, uh, is used to get the data from your source. So over here you see one line and you see over here the MDX query that is used for this report. So every report uses an MDX query and that is actually an MDX query, uh, the basic concept I explained to you in the beginning. Uh, it is built in the same way and that is actually what you see over here. In case you use a free format template um, that consists of, for instance, a table and a bridge, you will see an MDX query for every different part of your uh, free format template. Also, when you use a uh, financial statement template that consists of a table and it consists of the breakdown, for instance, and, then, uh, and a chart in the right top corner with the trend, in that case, the cockpit will create three different uh, MDX queries, which are then represented by three different lines. Another option to look at the complete queries used by CXO, or to check your cube calculation actually, is to just use your cube calculation in Management Studio, or in you, your case, in SBase. SBase uh, also has an, uh, an MDX editor uh, that you can use just, you can copy the statement the complete statement from the configurator and then you can paste it into SBase to see uh, whether it's working in SBase and also you might retrieve some uh, very specific error messages uh, which helps you in solving uh, 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 the issue that you have in your cube calculation. So how does it actually work uh, inside the cockpit? I'm now going to my uh, training application and I will give you an example of a cube calculation that you can create. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, create a cube calculation for this report. And for that I go to the CXO designer. And I open up my home report. And then I go to shared objects. And then the second option that we have over there, the cube calculations option. And here when you open up this uh, this window you see all the cube calculations that have been created before in this application. Uh, when you click on a cube calculation, you see the cube calculation here already on the right side, so it's already giving you a preview. Some of them are quite large, as you can see. You can get pretty advanced with your cube calculations. I'm now just creating a new cube calculation, so by clicking on this button over here, Add new cube calculation. And I should now first give it a name. Uh, just give it a simple name. I want to create in my report the gross margin percentage. It was not there. So we'll call my cube calculation gross margin percentage. To make it unique, I just put my initials in front of it. But you can give it any name you want. I do advise you uh, to give your cube calculations always the same type of prefix because when you want to select a member inside your report it is sometimes quite difficult to see whether the member is a member coming from your source or whether the member is a cube calculation created in CXO cockpit. 
Um, if you always use the same prefix for the names of your cube calculations, it's quite easy to recognize that we are talking or that we are using a cube calculation instead of uh, a calculation or a member that is coming from your source. The display name is an important one. That is the name that will be used inside your report. So give it a proper name and then you won't have to use a custom description inside your report. The source system. Um, a cube calculation is always based on one source, so therefore we call it cube calculation. And you have to specify the source on which you want to base this cube calculation. In this case, I will use EPM. And then the um, next important step is that we need to figure out, or we have to think of in which dimension we want to create the cube calculation. In this case, uh, we are creating a cube calculation um, gross margin that calculates the gross margin percentage. And a good place for this cube calculation is the account dimension. In this case, I think it's quite obvious. So I select the account dimension. And then this means that you can find this cube calculation in that account dimension. Over here, we have the selector in which we can add members to our cube calculation. I open this up and then I get a complete list of all the different dimensions of my uh, source system. In this case, I want to use the gross margin account, so I select the account dimension and then I'm going to search for the gross margin account. I can just navigate, but I can also just search for that number using the search option over here. So here it is already, gross margin. And the next step to add this member to my MDX query it's just by hitting this Add button. Um, my uh, demo application is based on HFM, so therefore you see here also the hierarchy name. Um, in your case with SBase, you probably will see it like this, so only the dimension name and then gross margin. It's just a small difference, but when you add the member like do it over here, it will automatically add in the correct way. So you don't have to be bothered with this part. It will add it like this. So as you can see, I can also just start typing inside my query window. Um, I won't recommend it because if you make just a tiny mistake, you will get an error or your cube calculation does not work. So if you need members of your source, just try to use the selectors here at the top because then you know for sure that everything is added in the correct way and that you're also using the correct name, member name of the member you want to use. In this case, I want to divide the gross margin with our sales account. So I look for sales not add the member. So we can just use the divide symbol that you're used to in, for instance, Excel. That also works with MDX. And this is for now it. I'm just going to save it. What you will see now is that at the bottom we have this gross margin percentage calculation. If I now close my window, I can go to my rows list and I can add the account, the cube calculation that I just created. So I added a member, it's not the default member EBITDA, at the, the added current member. But I can now search for my cube calculation, so with my initials in front of it, and it just behaves as an ordinary member. The last thing I want to do is I want to put it on the correct place underneath my gross margin. And now you see that I see zeros. So for some reason I do have a result, um, but it is not the expected result. When I hover over the zero you see 0.34. So my cube calculation is working. However, my um, scaling is not correct at this moment. 
So the scaling is just on default for this row, so picking up the thousand scaling of the report. So in this case, the last thing we need to do is we need to change the scaling. I will use, oh, start the decalate. I will use percent one. And now you will see that we do see the uh, percentages that we want to see. Um, I'm going to make an exception now. I'm going to um, make it a bit more difficult. And for that, I can just click on my cube calculation. And then we have this option over here, edit. So we can immediately edit the cube calculation from the report we're working in. You can also go to shared objects and cube calculations again and search for the cube calculation over there. But in this case, I'm going to edit my cube calculation um, directly from the report. So you see that uh, the information we provided before is exactly the same. Uh, we see here our cube calculation and I'm now going to add a uh, case when statement, so an if statement to it. I'm going to write case when and I want to check a period number. It doesn't matter so much which one, but I'm now going to search for the period dimension and I do want to check the member March, for instance. I'm copying the first part and let's use it like this. I can also leave it like this and I'm going to write current member dot name is March. So I start with the case men and I now check the period number March. Remember, for S base, it's a bit different, not a lot. I will write it underneath it. Sorry that I don't have a demo uh, application with uh, with S base, but with S base, it will look like this. So then, it's almost the same, but it uses the IS. You don't have to use the name because we just specify here also uh, the period, so the dimension. So that is how it looks like with S-Base. This won't work over here, so I'm removing it and I follow with my case when statement. And then after the then, I want that March period to be empty. In this case, I write null. With S base, that's the other difference. It is uh, missing. So with S base, you would just simply write missing, and that will give you an empty result. All right. Now, in all other cases, so I use the else. We do want to use this calculation over here. So we do want to see the gross margin percentage. And then I have to close my calculation with an end. Um, as you can see right now, you cannot fully see um, the MDX statement. We can use this button over here, and then it's going to full screen mode. So then it's quite easy just to make changes uh, inside uh, your cube calculation, and it's also good to have a good overview. It gives you a pretty good overview of your complete cube calculation. Um, for now, I think it's fine and we should now check whether the cube calculation is working. So we have this check button over here. If your cube calculation is not working, you won't be able to save your cube calculation. You will immediately get an error. Um, but before saving it, I always check it to see whether the syntax is correct. And now it is correct, as you can see. I now save my cube calculation. I'm going to check if my cube calculation is indeed working as expected. So uh, at this moment, the data in my report is on September. So we do see numbers and I'm now going to select March. 
And as you can see, we don't have any result at this moment. It is because we made an exception. If I select April, we do see data again. So that is the way how you can make an exception. If I now go to my next slide, um, I've made an exercise and that exercise is actually uh, the one uh, that I currently just show to you. So I'm not going to repeat that, um, but the exercises, also the result of the exercise, over here you can see it, gross margin sales, um, that is quite good for you also to try it out. So if you have an, uh, an application at your disposal that you can just use for trying out different things, um, try to make these kind of calculations that I have here in, uh, in the different exercises of this training. Um, it really learns you or you will really learn how to use MDX. And I know also the beginning, uh, without the examples even, it's quite theoretical. And you might think, okay, that looks easy. I can easily create cube calculations, but in the end, when you start working with it, it's just quite difficult, and it's just a matter of trying, and then you will yeah, understand quite soon how it works. If I go to my uh, next exercise, in this exercise, I want to calculate the total column which is shown here at the end. So this is not information that is coming uh, from the source, it is a cube calculation. And also in this case, I want to make an exception. So in this case, I want in the year 2015 that Asia is being excluded from the total for some reason. In all other years, so uh, for instance 2016, I don't want to have any exception, I just want to see the total of the US, Europe, South America and Asia. Um, so I'm now going to create uh, this cube calculation. So I'm going um, to my uh, demo application. But before I do that, I want to ask you a question first. And let's see if this is going to work. And the question is stated here at the top. So in what dimension to create this cube calculation? You can go uh, to the URL that you see at the top, pollev.com slash CXO16. And if you go there just with your browser on your, uh, on your PC, or you can even uh, use your mobile phone, uh, you can vote. And you can select either A, B, or C. So I see that someone is already uh, giving an answer, but yeah, I'm asking you to give an answer to see if everyone is agreeing uh, with uh, the answer given right now, answer B entity, or that some people also think that we can create a cube calculation for the total in another dimension. So let's see, I'm still getting new uh, answers in. Okay, I think that uh, at this moment, uh, everyone uh, provided an answer. 
Um, as you can see, uh, it's between entity and uh, and measure. So 40% voted for entity, or it's even less. We get more votes in, so maybe I have to wait a bit. <laughs> Okay, so actually now measure is, uh, is winning. Um, I will give you the answer now. So I will go to the next slide. So let's see if that is working. The answer is actually entity. And um, the reason for that is that we have, if we go back to the previous slide, is we have a list here uh, already with entity uh, members, so United States of America, Europe, South America, and Asia. And then it's quite easy to create a calculation inside that same entity dimension. So you should be aware that those members are part of the entity dimension, not of, for instance, the measure dimension. But because that dimension is already used in your uh, column list, it is actually best to create your cube calculation in that same dimension, entity dimension, because then you can simply select your cube calculation in that list, and you do not have to add any other uh, dimension number to it. You're just creating a total in your entity dimension. So how does it work? I'm now going to my demo application, and I'm just going to show you how you can create that cube calculation. Go to exercises. I go to exercise two. As you can see, we now have the same report as you saw uh, in the picture, but we're missing one column, which is the total column. And that is the cube calculation that I'm going to create right now. So go to cube calculations again. I want to create a new cube calculation. I will start with my initials again, and I will say total entities, because it's the total of the entities. Display name will be total. This is the name that will be uh, displayed at, uh, in, the, in the column header. Source system, in my case, is all the time the same. And the dimension, here it comes, that I want to use, in this case, is the entity dimension. So I attach my cube calculation to the entity dimension. Uh, in this case, I want to check for a year. I want to check for 2015. So what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to check, I'm going to use current member dot, dot name is 2015. I should always start with case when. So that is what I'm going to put on top of it. So case when the year is 2015. Here comes the then. And then we kind of give the result. I want to exclude Asia from the total. If I go to the entity dimension, I can just uh, simply select the top number that is already in our application, so which is just the total of those four different regions uh, you saw in the report. And I just subtract then Asia from the total. In all other cases else, I just want to display the geographical member. I just want to see the complete total. And I close my uh, query with end. Again, I check it whether my syntax is correct. In this case, it's correct. I save my cube calculation. You can see it over here, ML total entities at the bottom. You see the preview on the right side. And I'll go back to my report. In this case, to my column list, because that is the place where I do want to add my uh, total. So I'm just selecting my columns list. I'm adding a new item to it. And over here, just as, uh, as was the case with uh, the account number we created, I can now simply select the cube calculation I created inside that entity dimension. So I do not need uh, to add a different dimension, for instance, the measure dimension, I could just add the total over here. So I'm searching for my cube calculation, total entities. 
And as you can now see, we have the total. In this case, it's the total of all the different regions. This is because it's 2016, so let's see what 2015 is doing. And as you can see, 2015, already Asia is higher, so it's uh, obviously excluding Asia from the total. So we have the total of South America, Europe, and the United States. So that's why we get this 10.3 uh, total. Um, I want to have a short break. We're now uh, busy for uh, almost an hour. So let's have a break of around five minutes and then I will continue with, uh, with the train.
Okay, I want to uh, continue. I hope everybody is back. Um, I have one other exercise based on uh, MDX uh, cube calculations, and then we move on towards the topic of uh, MDX lists. So let's have a look at the next uh, exercise. And in this case, uh, we're looking here at the PL, and we're looking at the PL for different months. And this is a 12 months uh, rolling report, so we see that September is uh, selected. And um, that uh, September is showing in the last column. Um, what we want in this case, in this uh, exercise, is that the value of um, the member, the period member of the column, um, that is the same as the member selected in the point of view for the period dimension is null actually, so is missing. So that we do not see that number. So I want to um, make a dynamic calculation that both uses uh, the current member function, so the function that is actually looking uh, at the cell context, and uh, the added cur variable, so the member that is used in the point of view. I think this is quite an, um, an, uh, a useful uh, example. Before that, I have a question again for you. So let's do it in the same way as we just did. I'm going to start off right here. So again, you can use uh, the same uh, website, so the same URL. And the question is stated at the top, what to use in a cube calc to get an empty result? So it can be, can it be that we need to use empty, that we need to use zero, or that we need to use null or missing? So please let me know. Okay, I think that everyone had uh, enough time to uh, give an answer to this question. Um, most of the uh, people joining this, uh, this uh, training voted for C, which is the correct answer. So it is uh, in HFM, in the case of HFM you use null, and in case of SBASE you use missing. So you just write missing in your cube calculation, and then the result of your cube calculation is just empty inside your report. Um, I'm now going to my demo application again, and then I'm going to show you how to make sure that the cost of goods sold value for the period member selected in the point of view so this is, was actually what you saw in uh, the picture, in the thumbnail on the slide. So we want this cost of goods sold value to be uh, just missing. So we don't want to see the value over there. So I now go to my cube calculations again. I'm going to create a new one. Start with my initials, so at least I know that's a cube calculation. 
and I'm giving this cube calculation filter cost of goods sold. Cost of goods sold, just the same display name. My source is the same source, EPM. And now I have to really think of yeah, in what type of dimension uh, do I want to create this cube calculation. Um, this cube calculation should be applicable to the complete report. Uh, I don't want this cube calculation to be in the period dimension, that doesn't really work. And you should also think of that that cube calculation is then uh, available inside that dimension, so that is not something you really want because, for instance, when you have the period dimension and you drop down, you would see then that cube calculation or you should put uh, security on it. So you should use a dimension um, of which just a single member is used in your report. So let's say the total member or the non-member or at least a dimension of which the detail is not used because if you use that uh, dimension um, then you can just simply uh, uh, specify that member that you would normally use on your report, that single member inside your cube calculation and then you will get the data from your source for that member. So in this case I'm going to use my measure dimension because that is a dimension I'm not really using in this report. I'm just using uh, the num number of that dimension on which all the data is for this report. And I'm now starting to create my cube calculation. So I just write again case one. We want to check. First of all, we want to check whether the period member of my column doesn't so, uh, matter so much which number I select here, but that's the period member of my column, so I write current member dot name, so remember current member is checking your cell context, so it's going to check my column now, is, and now I want that the column that contains the period that is equal to the period that is selected in the point of view, that for that column the cost of goods sold um, is empty. So in this case I now want to uh, use the added cur because the added cur is the member selected in the point of view. So I'm going to use the added cur of the period dimension. Like this. So now we're checking whether the member, the period that member in the column is equal to the period member selected in the point of view. I'm going to extend it a bit because I only want it to be empty for one account, which is the cost of goods sold account. So I use an end. And I'm now looking for my cost of goods sold account. I'm adding that account to it. Um, you can leave it like this on one uh, line. You can also put it on the next one. It doesn't really matter. It's just the way how you want um, to, uh, to write it. I want to check the current member dot name. And it should use, in this case, because it's HFM, also the account and uh, hierarchy name, which is in HFM the same. So now I'm checking whether the account used on my report, so in my rows in this case, whether it's the cost of goods sold account. So like this, I'm just checking the name, so my mistake, like this. Now I can go to my den, and in this case I want to have no results. I use null. In your case, you will often use missing. In all other cases, and now I have to think of what type of member to use. In all other cases, uh, so for all the other accounts, but also for all the other periods, I do want to see data. And in this case, we are, because we are in the measure dimension, I need to use a member of that dimension that contains the data. And in my application, that is the non member. So I'm now selecting the non member. So I'm just pointing now towards that member. 
So what CXO would do, it will check whether uh, the period selected in the, in the column is the same as the one selected in the point of view. It will check the account. Um, and if it's not what you're checking over here, it will come into the else. And then it's just using this number on which uh, the data is in your source. So what is important is that you always use a member in your cube calculation that contains data uh, in your source. And that is what we are currently doing. So we're creating a cube calculation in the measure dimension. And then we do need to specify a member of the dimension that contains data. Otherwise, uh, your source system uh, doesn't give you back any data because it will use the cube calculation name and it doesn't recognize that name and it will not give you any data. So now checking this query. The query is correct. I save it. I can now return to my report. And now I need to go to my measure dimension. So my measure dimension is not in my rows or my lists and it's not in a point of view. I go to settings and I go to dimensions. And now instead of using this default measure member, I'm going to use my cube calculation in which I filter the cost of goods sold. And as you can see right now, the cockpit is automatically updating. And now we do not see any value anymore for cost of goods sold and for the period in my column that is the same as the period selected in the point of view. So the cube calculation works for all the other uh, periods and uh, accounts. We do see data and the only reason why we see data is because we specified the non-member of my measure dimension. If I'm now changing the period to, for instance, July, you will see that the last column will be on July. As you can see, but still we do not have any result for July. If we now go back to September, September was empty, but for July we do have a number. So my cube calculation is working in the correct way. And this is quite a useful uh, exercise to understand the difference between that current member function and the edit curve. Um, we are going to share this PowerPoint uh, presentation uh, um, at the end uh, of this uh, meeting. So you can do the exercises yourself. And like I said before, I advise you to do that because also this one is quite a good one just to try it out yourself. I have one slide left regarding the cube calculations and that is the following. Um, that is actually really about uh, what I use now in this last exercise with the measure dimension. So in your cube calculation, you should always use a member that contains data. Um, so like I said in the first line, in some cases you want to create a cube calculation that is applicable to the complete report. Now in this case, that was true. Uh, we wanted to use a cube calculation that was just checking the period and was checking the account. And um, it was quite convenient to create it in the measure dimension because then it was just applicable to everything inside my report. So what we did is we picked a dimension of which the detail is not used in the report. So I didn't have any measure member in my rows or in my uh, columns. It was not used in my point of view. It was just specified under dimensions and only one member was used and it was the default member, the non-member of the dimension. Uh, you can also use a dimension of which uh, the total member is used. Again, you do not use any detail then, so total instead of none is also fine. So two examples I gave here. So you can use the non-member of the measure dimension or you can use the total member of a custom one dimension, for instance. But in the end, the general rule when you create cube calculations is a cube calculation should at least contain a member of the same dimension the cube calculation is created in. Because in case you specify that member, it will use that memory when querying your source and it will give you data. Sometimes you forget that. You do not specify a member from the dimension. And the result will be that you won't see anything. It will just be empty. You will, do, you will not get any error messages when you check the query because the query is just written in the correct way. There are no technical errors. 
but your source system doesn't simply understand uh, or know what uh, memory it should use for, in this case, the measure dimension. We can now go to the next part, and uh, this part is covering the MDX lists. It's also making use of MDX, so um, that's the good thing. It's working a bit differently compared to cube calculations. So again, here we have quite some examples for you. Um, so hopefully then it's clear how you can use uh, MDX lists. Um, they are quite powerful, so I think it's a really nice feature that we have. And um, with the MDX lists, we leverage the set related MDX functions to create a member list. So you can just use MDX to create a list, and you can create a dynamic list. So you can create it with all the dynamics of hierarchies, ranges, exclusions, and you still have the ability to format your list. So although the list is dynamic, you still have the formatting options that you would normally have in a normal list. So in a normal list, you manually add uh, different members, and it, that can be quite time consuming. With an MDX list, that's not really necessary because you can, for instance, use a descendants function. And by using that function, all the descendants of a certain member that you have specified will be used in that list. So it will save you time. And next to that, uh, you can also make your list really dynamic. So you can use a case when statement in your um, MDX list. And then based, for instance, on a selection in your point of view, you can display a different list. Next to that, with MDX lists, because we already have actually dynamic lists inside our SIEP, so put applications, so you're already able to select, instead of normal, for instance, a descendants list, and then you can select a certain parent, and then you will see the descendants of that parent you select. But uh, the advantage with MDX lists is that you can still use that descendants function, but you can use it in combination with a member from a different um, dimension. So uh, with the basic functionality of CXO, you're always restricted to one dimension that you can specify, for instance, that you want to see the descendants of an entity member. But with MDX, uh, you can also uh, specify members from other dimensions, for instance, from the account dimension. So I gave here on this uh, slide two different uh, examples. And I'm just going to uh, show you or discuss them so you can understand how that works. Um, it's already quite sophisticated, so we'll just uh, start with uh, a simple beginning. But MDX functions, they make use of, or you can make use of MDX functions in your lists. And one of those functions is the descendants function. Also, this function is uh, described in the Microsoft library, and um, they have quite some good examples of how you can use an MDX uh, function. But in this case, the MDX descendants function, is this part. I'm not breaking it a bit down. But this is the descendants uh, function we use. And what does the descendants uh, function actually do? Well, in this case, it looks at the geographical member that we have uh, specified. And that one stands for what level we want to uh, get the descendants from. And in this case, it's the next level. So one step lower than geographical. And what do we want to see from that level? We only want to see those members from that level. So in this case, it means that we want to see the children of geographical. And uh, in my demo application, um, you saw that we had different regions. Those regions, like the US and Europe, are the direct descendants of geographical, which is the total. And in this case, uh, the result of my list will be that we have four uh, different or five different regions because those ones are the direct descendants of geographical. In this case, we don't only want to see uh, those regions, but we also want to see it in combination with the sales account. So we see four or five different regions, and uh, for those four or five different regions, we see sales next to it. So 
So only sales is used in, um, in this list. But we do not only want to use those four regions with uh, the account sales, but we also want to use it in combination with the account profit. And that is what we do in the last part. So I'm going to put this part back again. And also this part back again. So you can see that this part is exactly the same as the part below. However, instead of using sales, we use the account profit. Um, one important rule is that when you want uh, to group members uh, of different dimensions, so we're not talking about the entity dimension, and for those different regions we want to see or we want to use the sales account. If you want to combine it like that, you have to use a cross-join. So this is the cross-join function, and with the cross-join uh, cross function, you're able to actually create a cross-product. The cross-product is a product and a result of a combination of the entity member and the sales uh, member, so the account member. Here we do exactly the same. We also use a cross-drawing uh, for the same descendants of geographical and in this case for the account profit. And the last thing we need to do in this case is to make a set out of it. And that is what we do with those curly brackets. Those curly brackets, you also saw them uh, in the very beginning with the basic query. Curly brackets are used to create a set, which is just a list. And that is actually what we're currently creating. We're creating uh, a list. So we put those curly brackets around it. And in this case, what we will get are the direct descendants of common communications, so geographical that is, for sales, and also the direct descendants of common communications for profit. A lot of uh, concepts of uh, MDX lists is already uh, included in this example. So when we do, when I do the exercises, I will just start from scratch. So then it's a bit more clear how you can really start with your MDX list and how you can make it more advanced. Uh, another example, uh, which is quite good, is the top count uh, example. Uh, sometimes you do want to have like your top five entity members for profit or your bottom five. So you want to see, for instance, uh, which uh, entities are not performing that well. Or maybe you want to see uh, which entities have the biggest variance, negative variance against uh, budget. It's really for exception reporting. Um, and in that case, you want to use the top count or maybe you want to use the bottom count. So with the top count, you get the top members of a certain dimension. And in this case, in this example, we use the entity dimension again. So um, in this case, I use the following part to indicate that I want to use the base members of the member of the entity that I selected in the point of view. Why? the member of the point of view. Well, over here we use the added curve again, and we use the added curve of the entity dimension. So we're looking at the point of view, so the member, the entity member is selected in the point of view. And this part of the statement indicates that we want to have the members of level zero, which is the lowest level. So this will result in, an, uh, in a list with base members of the entity that you've selected in your point of view. And of that list of base members, we want to see, in this case, the top five. So the next part of the top count is this five part. And the five is just standing for how many members you want to have in our top count. The last part of the top count function should specify, uh, based on what we want to create, this top count. And in this case, it's based on the account profit. So the top count function always is always consisting of three different parts. I will just put it on different rows so you can read it more easily. So we have here top count. 
you start with a bracket, it's always working like that, you close it with a bracket, but you can see that it is consisting of three different parts, and we separate it with a comma. So the first part always specifies the list that we use in our top count. Then we specify uh, how many members we want to see in our top count. And uh, the last part is just an indication based on what we want to create this top count. Well, those ones are just two examples of uh, functions or of MDX lists that you can create. Um, and I already said it before, but you can still use uh, the formatting options that we have, for instance, the custom description, or that you want to suppress empty rows in your list, and for that we use conditional rules inside, uh, inside the cockpit. So I will show you how it works, but before I do that, I first have some examples left that I want to show you. Um, I will briefly discuss them. Uh, as I said, you will receive this PowerPoint presentation, so uh, have a look at also those examples. They're quite useful. In case you want to simply display children, you can also use this dot children option. In case you want to use uh, all the members of a certain dimension, and don't do it for your entities because uh, then uh, the query might take quite long. But for instance, with years, this is, uh, this is possible. You don't have that many years in your years dimension. So it will just give you all the different years that are part of the dimension. Um, the descendants uh, function, as discussed already, um, in this case, we look at the direct descendants of geographical. We can also use, for instance, two, and then it will skip a level. So in this case, in our demo application, it won't look at the region. So it won't look at, for instance, Europe, but it will go to the next level, to countries, for instance, to Italy or to, uh, to the United Kingdom. Um, Cross-join, use it when you want to make a combination of members and cross-product of members of two different dimensions. And accept, it's also quite a useful one. Accept, you just write accept, you open with a bracket and you close again with a bracket. Accept first specifies uh, the list that you want to see, so we use a simple descendants function. And then after the comma, you see a member being specified, and this member is now, uh, well, filtered out of that list of total products. So here you get a list with total products, descendants of total products. And then we just filter out this P series by making use of this uh, accept function. If you want to add more than one exception, um, you have to use those curly brackets. We make a list out of it of exceptions. And you can just separate the members by using a comma. You can use a comma and then specify the next member. The last one, I already gave it uh, in the previous uh, slide as example, but to uh, retrieve base members, you should always use this function, so the levels, zero, dot members function uh, for S-base. Uh, for the users that both have HFM uh, and, and, and S-base, uh, the differences are here displayed in this uh, in this slide. So I think the second one is now quite uh, uh, well known. So with uh, HFM we use the, the equal sign and we check on the number names. And over here with SBase we use uh, IS. And another difference is that uh, to retrieve base members in a list we can use this leaves function in combination with the descendants function for HFM. And for S-base, we need to use this, like I just discussed. So that's the difference between HFM and S-base again. Um, some basics for MDX uh, lists in, uh, in the cockpit. Um, the different dimensions that you um, use inside your MDX list so that you specify in your MDX query, those dimensions should be part of your list. So normally you just, uh, with a normal list, you for instance select um, the entity dimension and the account dimension and then for those two dimensions um, you can select members. 
for our MDX list is working exactly the same. So as soon as you specify an uh, entity member and as soon as you specify an account member, you have to select those two different dimensions in your list, otherwise it won't work. Um, MDX lists are created by a set or a tuple set expression. So with MDX lists, you always have to use those curly brackets. They, those ones stand for sets, so for a group of members, and that is what you want to display in your list. So use those curly brackets. In the examples I will provide you later on, you will see how it works. Uh, good thing is that we can use cube calculations in uh, the MDX lists. So just like the original members, you can just use cube calculations. And in MDX lists, you can also make use of variables that are defined in uh, Seek Circle Grid. So now a demo of MDX lists. And I'll go to my uh, demo uh, application again. And the first thing I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to create an MDX list. So the first one, we go to lists, so it just works the same as with a normal list. And I'm going to create a new list by pressing on new list. And I'm just indicating that I want to create an MDX list. And instead of uh, using the normal type of lists, of using another dynamic one that is already here available, I want to use now this MDX type. And in this case, I start off simple. So I want to create a list of entities. So the entity dimension is the dimension that I select over here. So now I can create a list with entities. Uh, my query is empty and therefore here on the right side you see that we still have nothing in this list. It even says it's an error. So we need to add something over here in this, uh, in this box in the MDX specification to see whether it is working and to see what type of members uh, will be then provided or will be put into the list. So what I want to do is I want to see the descendants of our top member of our demo application and in this case the top member is geographical so that is the member that I'm selecting right now. I'm going to add it in the same way as with an ordinary cube calculation. And as you can already see we now just see common communications so that is the uh, description of the member that I select over here. So this list is now containing just this simple member. However we want to make it a bit more advanced so I'm now going to use that descendants functionality. And that descendants functionality or function is always also consisting of three different parts. So I want to see uh, the different regions. And I know that the different regions are on the next level if we look at geographical. So I enter one and then I'm just specifying that I want to use only that level in my list. And as you can see, we now see the different regions. We also have a new joint venture. Um, but this list is working and it's just giving me the next level. If I change this one into two, it will skip one level and we see the different countries and regions. So I go back and now we only see the regions. If I use two, it skips that one so we don't see Europe. Now we see Italy and we see United Kingdom. I only want to see the regions for now, so I select one. And then I want to add one other thing. I actually only want to see the different regions for one certain account. Um, with our standard functionality, with our dynamic list, that's not possible. With, but with MDX list, this is possible. So the first thing we need to do is we need to add a dimension to our list, the account dimension. So uh, we want to add for instance, the net profit account to this list, so therefore I need to select this dimension. As you can see now, we don't see any result anymore because CXO is expecting us to specify an account member, which I didn't do yet. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to add net profit account to it, add like this, and I put brackets around it, make a combination 
of the geographical member and I make a combination of net profit. As you can see, I already have a result. Especially with uh, uh, S-Base, it's always a good thing to just put the cross-join or to use the cross-join function. Because sometimes with S-Base, it just doesn't work when you simply use those brackets around it. If you use cross-join, it is always working. So use cross-join when creating or when making a combination of two different um, of two uh, different dimensions. Um, for now, this is actually what I want to use. So I'm going to save this list. It's called MDX list. So I'm going to copy this one because I want to reuse it now in the report. So I'm now going to create a new uh, sorry, a new report. So I go to new report, and in that report, I'm going to use this list to see how it works. So test MDX list. The template I'm going to use, just a simple multi-column. And I'm now going to select, just for columns, the simple list, it doesn't matter so much which one. Uh, for instance, this one. The rows is more interesting because in, for the rows I'm going to select the MDX list that I just created. So MDX list is this one. And here you already see the preview, so you see that it's the correct one that we just created. And now you see that our list is also working in a report. The only thing is, is what I don't like at this moment is that we still see the new joint venture member, which is empty. So this doesn't give us any information. And now I want to suppress that value. But if we go to our list, our rows list, we see the different members, but we also see that everything is grayed out and I simply cannot go to format or to display and indicate that the value should be suppressed for the members that are empty. For that we use the rules. So we have an option over here at the top, rules. So click on that. And then we can start with a uh, specific condition and then we can indicate, well, what we want to do for that condition. In this case, I'm just going to indicate over here that I want to suppress the value and I want to suppress the no data in zero rows. I'm not giving here any information in an if statement, so that means that for all members of this report, now this suppress value is working. So I save this one. And now you see that our joint venture is gone. And if I now go to display, you also see that we have now this option, suppress no data and zeros, instead of no suppress. So this rule is working fine. And this is actually the way how you can make sure that you can make still the changes, the formatting changes inside this dynamic list. Another example that I can give, you now see that we use United States of America. Maybe that's a bit too long. So I'm going to add a new row to it, and in this case I do want to use the if statement. I'm going to filter on entity name equals, that is fine, and I can now enter a name. And in this case, you see it also here at the bottom. I want to filter for United States. So I'm going to write United States, and then I can indicate what I want to do. Well, in this case, I want to change the description. So I'm indicating that I want to set a custom description and instead of United States or whatever is being displayed over here, so it's now saying United States of America including net profit, I just want to show US. So I don't want to see United States of America, I don't want to see net profit, it should just display US. So I save this one. And now as you can see, CXO just loops to this list, sees that the first one is United States, and then changes the description as it's coming from the source and changes it with the custom description I just provided, the, U, the US uh, description. So that is the way how you can use rules in combination with an MDX list. Now go back to my PowerPoint slide. <clears throat> we have a new exercise and we also have a new question for you. Uh, let's start from this point. Um, I now want to create a list, a column list actually, 
that contains all the years and all the quarters, as you see in this example. But what I also want, I want to suppress all the years and quarters uh, that are empty. Otherwise, the list will be very big. We have a lot of columns. That is not what I want. I just want the years and uh, quarter combinations that contain data. Before I show you how you can create it, I have a new question for you. And it is how to get a cross product of different sets in an MDX list. So how can you combine uh, different dimensions in an MDX list? And especially with uh, SBase, it is important that you use uh, yeah, the correct function. So please give me your answer and let's see if everyone agrees now with the cross join or that you think that we need to use, for instance, just brackets or curly brackets. Okay, I think that everyone um, just gave an answer already, and the answer is indeed correct. Everyone gave the correct answer, which is cross-join. You should always use the cross-join, and especially with SPACE. So let's see how I can create a list of this exercise. So I will go out of my uh, PowerPoint slide again. And I'm just going to create a, create a list with all the different years and, uh, and quarters. So for now, I go to a report that I already created, and I'm going to replace the current column list. So for that, I go to content, columns, and I'm going to create a new list. And this is just a report list only available in this report. And I'll just call it MDX list. Of course, list type is MDX again. In this case, um, I want to see years and I want to see periods. So I have to use two different dimensions. But for now, I'm going to start off with years. Let's start off in a simple way, so year. I go to my year dimension to select a member from that uh, dimension. Doesn't matter so much which one. Because in this case, I do need, need that uh, year dimension in front of it, but I can just indicate that I want to use all the members of that uh, year dimension. As you can see on the right side, we immediately see now the members that are available in my year dimension. Um, but that is not the list that I want. I also want to have it uh, with my quarters. So now I have to add the period dimension to it to my list, I add the period dimension. You will see that my list is failing because it is requiring me to specify a member or at least one member from the period dimension. And now I start off in the correct way. I'm going to use that cross drawing. So you gave the correct answer, that is a good thing. I'm going to use it now to make a combination of years and periods, so to make a cross product actually. So let's see what is happening. And I now add I'm going to my period dimension, and I'm going to select this top number, add. and I don't want to see year, I actually want to see uh, the children of year, which are the 
quarters in my application. So as you can now see, we get a cross product of the year and uh, the quarters, which is quite nice. So we see still 2011 and first of four quarters, and then it goes to 2012, and then the four quarters of 2012. So this is good. This is quite a good list. However, as you can see, we have a lot of members now in this list. So my columns uh, will be very wide to report. But I'm going to save it for now, because we need to use a rule to be able to suppress the columns that are empty. So let's first use this list. So I created this list, use selected list. It's now replacing it, and as you can see, there are still a lot of columns empty. So we actually only have 2015 and 16 data in this application, and the rest I don't want to see. So remember that you have to use rules for that. So I go to my column list, I click on rules, I don't want to uh, specify any condition, I just want to do it for all my columns. Suppress value, and I say it again, but it should suppress no data in zeros. As soon as I hit save, CXO is updating, and you will see only the columns that contain data. There you go. And this is uh, the result that I wanted to have. This is exactly looking the same way as on the slides. So again, we make a combination of MDX language, and we use an MDX query in combination with rules, and in that way we get the desired result. We go to the next exercise. Yes, the answer was cross-drawing. The result is also in the slides, so also when you practice yourself, you can still check whether uh, the result is uh, correct. Um, in this uh, list, we want to create a list with regions. So you see a rows list over here with the United States, Europe, and South America. Um, but we don't want to see Asia in this case, and we also don't want to see that joint venture member that doesn't contain um, any data. First of all, before I go back to my demo application and to show you how you can create that, I have a question again. So let's start a question first. Uh, how to create a set which is a group of members in an MDX list? So how can you create a set, a group of members? So do we use a normal brackets? Do we use the curly brackets? Or do we use a set function? Okay, well, everybody is again giving the same answer, uh, which is luckily the correct answer, because indeed, when you want to create a set group of members, actually a list, you always have to use those curly brackets. And uh, you separate the members of your, uh, of your group of members with a comma. I'm now going to exit again my slides. So, indeed, the answer is the curly brackets. So I'm now going to create um, this list with the exception, and also in that list I'm going to use those curly brackets. So let's see how that works. 
So I go back to my application. I go back to a new report. And I want to replace this PL uh, with a list of uh, regions and then with the exclusion of uh, Asia. So I go to content and go to rows. I'm going to create a new list. Go to report list, add new list, MDX list. It's not a normal list, it's an MDX list, so that is what we select. And now I have to think of what uh, dimensions do I want to use. Well, in this case, it's quite simple because I just want a list with entities. I just select the entity dimension. And now I can add members that I want to use. Well, I want to see the regions. And I don't want to add them all manually. So again, I'm going to the entity uh, dimension. And I'm going to select the geographical member, so the top member. Become a communications member. I add this member. And of that member, I want to see the direct descendants. You can write it with capital letters or with a lowercase. Uh, it is all possible, whatever you want. We want to see the next level. Here we write self. And now we see here that we have uh, the, uh, all the descendants of geographical, including Asia and also including the new joint venture. And now I'm going to add a new part to it, and that is the accept function. The accept function consists of two different parts. Function is always open with a bracket and close with a bracket, so that is what I'm already adding. And the first part is now our list with regions, but now I'm going to add an accept to it. And that accept in this case uh, will be Asia. So I'm now going to search for that Asia member. And I add that member to this query. And now as you can see, it's already filtering out Asia. So we now only have four members. New joint venture can filter it out also. Uh, but I'm going to use a rule for that. So I'm now going to save this part for now. I'm going to make a little change afterwards, but I'm going to use the selected list. So for now, we already have those three different regions. We still have a uh, new joint venture. In this case, I want to use a rule, again, just to filter out new joint venture. So that is what I do. Suppress value. Again, that member should be gone. And now I want to edit uh, my list because I also want South America to be filled out. So you can change your MDX list just by clicking here, Edit List, and then you get your MDX specification that you currently use. Because we want to filter out now two different uh, members, we need to use, we want to group those members, we need to make a list out of it, and we need to use those curly brackets. So we start with it, we end with it, it is working again. But I now want to also add South America to my list, so I separate it with a comma. I'm uh, going to the entity dimension again, and I'm now selecting South America, and I'm adding it to the MDX specification. As you can see now, also South America is gone. So here you do have to use those curly brackets because it's a group of members. I save it, and now you will see also that South America is gone. Um, I now move on towards uh, the last exercise of, uh, of today, and also the last part of this, uh, of this training. I have one last quest question also for you. So let's see if we get a 100% also uh, with that question. Would be good. The result, exercise six. This is the most uh, well advanced list that you can think of. I'm going to use a function, a top count function. And uh, with this function, I'm going to create a list that contains the top 25 business drivers based on products, customers, and sales offices. So it takes everything into account. And based on that cross product of that combination, it will put the combination with the highest number on top, and uh, it will create a top 25 in this case. So I have one last question for you, which is, 
what function to use to get a top 25 list. So do we need to use the bottom count function, the top members function, or the top count function? So please give an answer. I will wait for a few moments and then I'm back again. Okay, everybody gave an answer. I think the answer was quite uh, easy. Top count. I mentioned it in the last, in the previous slide. So I think uh, this uh, question was quite easy to answer. Um, it's just good to know that you can use top count and bottom count. I want you to remember those two different uh, functions uh, because they are very powerful, and I think you should also try them out in your application. So also, especially with uh, exception reporting, if you want to see uh, which entities are not performing well or are underperforming compared to budget or to last year, use the bottom count because then you can immediately get an overview when opening a report of the entities that are underperforming. Um, I'll go back to my demo application again for the last part. Exercise six. I want to replace the current uh, rows list that I use. So this is now simply a list of, with a normal list with um, entities. I'm going to content, two rows. Report list. And I'm going to create a new list again. This again, and the X list. Give the same name because it's a report list so only available in this report. MDX. And I have to think of uh, the type of different dimensions that I want to use. Well, I wanted to use actually uh, the product dimension, the customer's dimension, and uh, the entity dimension, a combination of those three different uh, dimensions. So in this case, I do need to select them all. So that is what I'm going to do. Um, so we have product, we have customer, and uh, we have entity here at the top. So like that, and I'm now first going to start off in a simple way. I'm going to uh, indicate that I want to have the descendants of uh, the total product member. I want to have the descendants, the direct descendants of the total customer member, and I want to have the direct descendants of, um, or actually I want to have the base members of the entity dimension. I have to say it correctly. Base members is uh, more useful here because we're looking at the top count. So, well, parents doesn't make any sense at this moment because then the highest parents will give you uh, the, 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 are the values with, uh, are the members with the highest value. So we need to have uh, base members. So for now, I'm going to start off with the product dimension. I want to use the top member of the dimension and um, I want to have the leaves. So remember that for SBase you have to write levels zero dot members, and with SBase you can also, for instance, use here 100. Then you pre-save. Then I think you will be on the lowest level. But with SBase you cannot leave this part empty. So just use the levels zero dot members or dot members uh, option because that will always work with uh, with SBase. So for now I'm just going to copy this part and I'm going to replace the total products with the customers, so the total customers. Like that. Last time I also do this now for the entity dimension in the exact same way. So we have entity, 
I want to have the top number of my entity dimension, which is geographical, like this. And now I want to combine them. Remember, we want to combine numbers from different dimensions, so I use a cross join. I open up with a bracket. I close with a bracket, and the different parts should be separated with a comma, as we do right now. It is a set, so we use curly brackets around it. And um, the last thing, oh, there we go. It's a very long list. So it's taking uh, some time to create this list. The last thing that uh, we need to do is we need to add the top count function to it. Top count function consists of three different parts. So First of all, I'm going to write top count. Oh, it's just a bit slow. Wait for one second. I have to write top count over here. So top count. I open it up. Sometimes I use uh, those new lines to easily see where I open up a bracket and where I close it, so also for the curly brackets. So here the descendants, closes here, closes here. This is this bracket is in the close of my cross drawing. You can even use uh, empty spaces or empty lines in between, doesn't really matter. Um, but for now, here we use, we close the cross drawing. Uh, I use now the comma because now the part comes that we specify that we want to have a 25, the top 25. And the last thing I do specify is that I indicate based on what I want to see a top 25. Well, in my current uh, report, I already have a drop-down list with accounts. So uh, it is pretty nice that when I select an account and that I will see the top count based on the account I select. So I'm not going to specify an account here. I'm just going to specify the measure none, uh, the none measure member, because I know that on that member, that none member, all the data is of my application. So I add this one, at this moment. And now I close my uh, top count. So now, as you can see, I have my top 25. So those ones are 25 lines. One last thing, I indicated that I want to have the product dimension, the customer dimension, and the entity dimension. Those ones are all specified. But over here, I'm now using the measure dimension, which I didn't uh, put in my list. The reason why I don't have to do it, it is because it's inside a top count, inside a certain uh, function. So it's in the last part only. So it's not really part of my list. Therefore, it's not necessary to add this dimension. Uh, to my list. So in case it's part of a set of a list, you do have to specify that dimension, but when it's just part of the end of a function, in this case of the top count function, you do not have to add that dimension uh, to your list. I save this, uh, this list now. I'm going to use that list. Let's see how that works. Uh, I didn't specify for what uh, period um, the list uh, should be uh, created, so based on what period. And as you can see right now, it's just basing now my top 25 on the dimension that is selected in the point of view. So as you can see here, it starts with the highest number and it ends with the lowest number. It is now based on gross sales, but I can also select a different uh, uh, account, net profit, and then we see, well, this is a wrong example, but for instance, direct cost, we see a different list. So we see different numbers, 664, 440. Um, so it's set up completely dynamic. And just based on the account that I select, CXO is calculating the top 25. So it actually happens pretty fast. It's doing it on the fly. So in my opinion, this is uh, quite a powerful function that you can use. So uh, if I were you, I should definitely try it out and see if you get it working in your application. Uh, a few last slides that I have. First of all, um, 
a bit of support. We do have explanations regarding the cube calculations and also the MDX lists on our wiki. So uh, first euro goes to the cube calculations expl uh, explanation and the second euro goes to the MDX lists. So also with uh, the MDX lists there are examples provided on our uh, wiki. So it's good that you check that one out. Um, I have one last slide that is just an indication of where you can get all our information. Um, as said before, this uh, PowerPoint slide deck is going to be shared uh, with you. So you will have all the information uh, we discussed uh, today during the training. Um, this was it. So I'm going to end the webinar right now. Uh, thanks for your attention. Thanks for joining this webinar, and also thanks for uh, for the interactive part for providing me with uh, with the answers to my questions.